Thank you, Francis. <laughs> This next song is, uh, is about a guy who was uh, here in PEI. I think he was brought here pretty much directly from Africa. And uh, his name was Dimbo or Dembo Suckles. And uh, Dembo, uh, once he was free, uh, he uh, bought himself a 100-acre farm down outside of Montague. And uh, when he had been a young man in Africa, slavers came into his village and uh, he ran and hid inside a hollow log. And of course, the slavers had a big pike with a hook on the end of it, and they stuck that into the log and into his back between his shoulder blades and drug him out of there. And uh, he, uh, he would tell that story for the rest of his life. He left a will and things which are still in the archives here in PEI. And uh, he actually uh, had a wife and a bunch of kids, and he left all, everything in his will, so he gave like certain trees to one member of the family and certain trees to another part of the family. And, uh, so this is called Dembo Suckles. would soon be his name. Well, Dembo hid in a hollow log. Slavers searched and found him there. He was dragged from his hiding place by an iron hook stuck in his back. And he could show Mark left by that cruel hook. He could show to his dying day. The mark left by Dembo truly a self-made man Bought a hundred acres of land He married Governor Fanning Slade Lived life to a very great age He could show to his dying day The mark left by Suckles would soon be his name. Dembo hid in a hollow log. Slaves searched and found him there. He could take to his dying days. The mark left by that road. He could show to his dying days. The mark left. Bye.
this next song is a, a song about two of the uh, two of the Byers brothers from Charlottetown. One of the brothers stole a loaf of bread and a pound of butter, and the other brother stole one Spanish dollar and an English half crown and some fish for his mother because she was hungry. And for those transgressions, uh, they were both sentenced to be hanged. And back then, I think, in jail around here, they'd sooner hang you than feed you all winter because right? it had to you know, cost money to feed you. So. The Shepherd family were totally, uh, their mother was just out of her mind. And they actually, I think she had to have a peace bond put against her because she threatened to, uh, she threatened you know, vengeance on the people who were going to kill her son. So that's the official story about the two Byers Beyer, brothers. Peter and Sancho, they called him Black Peter and his brother Sancho. And uh, there's a, a more oral history to that which can't really be proven, but I heard it as people talking about this when I was a kid. And uh, they said that the two boys were having affairs with the wives of prominent businessmen and the guys wanted them gone. So uh, gone they were. So they, uh, they told uh, uh, they told Peter that because he had stolen a loaf of bread and a pound of butter for the month that he would be in jail before they hanged him, that's what he would eat. That's all he would eat. So this is called One Spanish Dollar. Spanish dog 
dollar An English half crown One stole bread and butter The other five pounds Steal justice on Prince Edward's Isle. Here on PEI, uh, back in 1781, make sure I have my dates right, 1781, uh, Prince Edward Island, for some reason, when all other places were abolishing slavery, here on PEI, just to be different, I'm just kidding, they uh, enacted a slave act, which they didn't repeal until 1825. And uh, the reason for that, that, it was not so much about slavery, it was more about ownership of property. And the reason they enacted this act was so that the loyalists coming up from the states would know that they could bring their slaves with them and that they would continue to own them and their children. And uh, apart from the slave act, um, people brought slaves with them here, but it wasn't like in the states where there were like 500 slaves on a plantation. Um, here in PEI, except for, well, I guess Jean-Pierre Roma from the Roma settlement down near Brudenell. He probably had the most slaves of anyone, and there were probably about 12 slaves that he had there. Um, but everybody else had like one, two, three, maybe four slaves at the most. And the slaves often lived right in the house with everybody else. And of course, people worked together, played together, um, you know, that everybody would go to the dances. I think, you know, if you're working in the woods with a lot of people, you better become friends with them, you know, so. Um, and uh, there's another story about a young lady whose name was Susanna Skirman. And uh, she uh, was owned by uh, William Skirman, the patriarch of the Skirman family. And uh, she looked after everything in the house, but uh, there was some love interest between the two of those people. and. Uh, Different people asked Souk, they called her Souk, and they asked her, um, different people wanted to marry her and asked for her hand in marriage, and she refused them all the time. She wouldn't marry anyone, largely because, as far as I can tell, um, she and William were actually in love. And when he died, he left her enough money so that she could move off the island with a branch of the family over, I think it's like River Philip or River John, Nova Scotia. So, uh, so this song, this was also a big secret. Like, it was a secret, like, you know, here in PEI, there's lots of secrets, and everybody knows <laughs> it's, a, it's a little island. Right? So, so uh, this is called Is Sook Willen. That's very old. I know a secret if the truth be told. I know a secret, though some will say. Save your secrets for the judgment day. Well, is it the one? Is it the one? Is it the one? Is it the one to marry you? Thing. 
Doesn't care what religion or songs you sing Doesn't care about the color of your skin Doesn't care if it's a sin It's a villain It's a villain It's a villain It's a villain to marry you That's very old. I know a secret if the truth be told. I know a secret though some will say. Save your secrets for the judgment day. Well, is it willing? Is it willing? Is it willing? Is it willing to marry you? Shines through to better day for me and you. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Yes, it will marry you. Back in the 1800s, there was a boxer here named George Godfrey, and uh, he moved down to Boston and opened up a gym down there. And he was, uh, I've seen pictures of the man, he looks like a steel spring. You know, his arms just look like they're steel springs. And so uh, George Godfrey was also referred to later in his life kind of disparagingly by the newspapers as old chocolate, they called him. So. So he had worked in the gym and he'd been, you know, fought and won a lot of fights in Boston. And he'd earned the right to fight the great John L. Sullivan, who at the time was the bare knuckle boxing champion of the world. And if you see any pictures of uh, John L. Sullivan, he was a big, scary guy, right? A big, strong man. And uh, I know I wouldn't want him punching me, that's for sure. So George Godfrey had earned the right to fight Sullivan. And, uh, but back then, the uh, black... Uh, boxing League and the White Boxing League were not by law allowed to fight with each other. But the word was getting out in the public, you know, that, they, that you know, Godfrey'd earned the right to fight this man. So Godfrey's, uh, sorry, so Sullivan's uh, management organized a fight and they set it up and then they had the police come and break it up before they even got in the ring. But uh, it didn't do John L. Sullivan any good because the word went out that Sullivan was scared to fight him. So, uh, and uh, this song's called Old Chop. Godfrey was his name. He was big and strong as a man could come. A world class champion. A world class champion. He ran a gym in Boston. Far many a man. In the ring it was a wondrous thing. The power in his hands. The power in his hands. hard as steel. He made his way through the ranks to the great John Sullivan, the great John Sullivan. Big John was 
the best boxer in the world in his day. He refused to fight him. Chocolate was scared of him, they said. He was scared of him, they said. To cross racial lines, police shut him down for the first round to save John Sullivan's name. To save John Sullivan's name. Old Chocolate, they called him. George Godfrey was his name. He was big and strong as a man could come. A world class champion. A world class champion. They called him George Godfrey was his name He was big and strong As a man could come A world class champion A world class champion He ran a gym in Boston Fought many a man In the ring it was A wondrous thing The power in his hands The power in his hands song from sort of more more recent song okay thanks Tim. Um, it's from a song from more recent times uh, um, my friend Stella Shepard who lives down uh, well Stella lives like, sort of in back of Mount Stewart but her family are all from Cardigan and uh, she told me that she wrote a book first I read her book called Ashes of My Dreams and the the, the book is about the uh, the nuns here in PEI uh, sort of Catholic family services would often uh, take babies from unwed mothers. They would come and shame them and uh, take their babies from them and then they would have those babies adopted out down into New England um, at about $5,000 a child. I think they uh, had quite a business going and this affected lots and lots of families. They weren't, didn't just take black people, they took any woman who got pregnant out of wedlock uh, they'd come and you know, they'd come and take your, you know, convince you to give up your baby. A lot of the ladies uh, said that uh, they had no idea what they were signing at the time because you know, of the situation. So uh, Stella told me this story, and I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> so um, I read her book, and uh, I said, I have to write a song uh, about your story, Stella. And uh, she. Uh, she was quite happy that I would do that. So uh, this is song is actually one of the songs that's used in a play that's been written uh, by local playwright Linda Wigmore called The Shame of the Meek. And uh, we just did it a few months ago down at the theater in Georgetown. And I know it's going to be staged again. And uh, it was kind of interesting because uh, the head of family services came down to Georgetown and he was like, he was pretty good about things. He said, like, you know, times have certainly changed since then, but uh, Stella's story uh, really struck a, uh, it struck a chord with me. So. And uh, so this is called uh, Stella's Dream.
sorrow Two crows for joy Three crows for a girl Four crows for a boy In the dream world she walks At the twilight hour Forerunner of things to come Night and day greet each other Like markings, beak like hair. She tried to shout a warning, and the air held her words instead. The full moon is rising, gathering power as it grows. You can hear the voices calling, warm breeze begins to blow. Voices calling, warm breeze begins to blow. Like they get back in those days Took their babies for adoption Unknown faces far away They got money for those children Had no right to sell, you know The truth is whispered on the wind Warm breeze begins to blow is calling, warm breeze begins to blow. The full moon is rising, gathering power as it grows. You can hear the voices calling, warm breeze begins to blow. Maybe you folks would sing a chorus with us the next time it comes around. This full moon tomorrow night.
voice is calling, warm breeze begins to blow. is calling, warm breeze begins to blow. Five crows for silver, six crows for gold, seven crows for a seed, that's never to be told.